Hello, and welcome back to the Calm and Connected podcast. I'm your host, Janine Halloran, and I want to talk today about creating a calm down spot. So first, I want you to take a minute and I want you to think, where do you go when you want to calm down? Where is a spot in your house or your home or your place of work? Where can you go when you want to calm down? For me, it's my bedroom. I've decorated it in a way that makes me feel happy. It's painted a really calm blue, which is one of my favorite colors. I've got it set up with aromatherapy, and I've also got a little side lamp on my side table that isn't too bright, so I don't have to use the big overhead light. I try to keep it clean because I love the way a clean and organized space feels. And even if most of the room isn't clean, I keep my side table pretty clean. I also keep some of the things that I like to do to relax and de-stress really close to my bed. So I keep my arts and crafts. I have a basket for my crocheting. I also have a little space for my quilting that I can reach for. And then I also keep my 3DS by my bed because sometimes you need to play Animal Crossing. Just like Adults benefit from having a calm space. So do kids. Kids really benefit from having a space that they can create and make inviting and cozy and warm for themselves. It can be something that is created at home or it can be something that's created at school. There are a lot of schools now that are implementing calm down spaces, calm down corners, um, time in places take a break spots, all these different um, names for the same sort of idea. A place where a kid can go down when they're starting to get a little bit overwhelmed and where they can learn to manage their emotions. They can take a good break. I'll link to a couple of those videos in the show notes. So there's one I love from Edutopia that features an elementary school and there's one that features a high school. So I also just want to mention it's not just for little kids. High schools can also have these spots as well. And I've seen them in action, not only in this video, but in real life where you can have a space for kids to go when they are starting to be overwhelmed. I think it's really important, not only for our little ones, but also for our big kids. They get overwhelmed too. They get stressed out too. And they need a way to be able to manage it in a safe way. So how can you do this yourself? So the first thing is you've just got to identify a spot. So if you're at a school, you can identify a room or you can identify a space in the room that is going to be your calm down spot. If you are at home, then you can either use a corner of a a room, like you could use a part of the living room, a part of the dining room, um, or it could also be a child's space. So it could be their their part of their bedroom or their bedroom. That could also be their calm down space. For a while, I had a calm down space on my first floor and I had a calm down space for my kids in their own rooms. If things weren't going well, it was easy to have a calm down space on the first floor that they could easily access. And then the next thing you need to do is just define the space and make it cozy. So how are you going to mark it out? So I've used blankets just as a a way to mark it out um, in a corner, but you can also use a tent or you could use a hook and a canopy. Um, You could use bean bags, something to just delineate the space is different. Some way to define the space is this is the place where you go down, where you need to relax, where you need to uh, be able to first work on figuring out what you're feeling and then what to do to make yourself feel a little bit better. And then What you wanna do is you wanna add some calming tools. So you've identified the space, you've made it kind of cozy and made it inviting, but then the next thing to do is to add some tools in it so that kids can actually utilize the space as intended, as a way for them to regulate their emotions. So um, what you can do is you can um, add in a coping skills toolkit like we talked about in the last episode. Um, you can make a toolkit for your particular child if you're working on a calm down space at home. If you're working on a calm down space at school, then you make a general toolkit for the entire class. And so, you know, kids love fidgets. Kids love silly word games. Kids love Mad Libs. Kids love things that they can squeeze. Something like Mad Matter might be a great thing to put in a calm down corner. Coloring pages. 
a Hoberman sphere to encourage deep breathing, all these different things that might be helpful for kids to use in a calm down space at school. And you can use the wall space too. use your space efficiently. So you can put um, feeling spaces up on the wall. You can put um, deep breathing posters up on the wall to help kids recognize how to take a deep breath and encourage them to take a deep breath to help their body get a little bit more relaxed and calmer whatever visuals will work for you. And then in the video, the Edutopia video, you can actually see that um, they have a worksheet or a think sheet that kids do when they're in that calm down space at the school. So they, it's sort of a structure for them um, to know what to do when they get into the space, identify how they're feeling, what they can do, and helping them get back into the classroom, which leads me to my next point is making sure that you explain and practice it. So you want to make sure that the expectations for the calm down corner are pretty clear, um, especially at a school. At, a, at home, you can be a little bit, there's a little bit more flexibility with it. But in school, it's designed really to be a space where kids go for a few minutes and then return to the classroom in a calmer space. You don't want it to become something where it's amorphous and they don't really know and you just go and you can just hang out there all day. That's not the that's not the point of a, of a properly set up calm down corner. The point of it is for them to be able to go relax, settle, and then return to class so they can do the learning that they're supposed to be doing. That is the point of school. So it makes a lot of sense to really think about the expectations around it. So talking with kids about how do you get into the calm down space? How do you, how do you communicate with me that you need to go there? How can I communicate with you if I think that you might benefit from a little time in the calm down space? How do, what are the expectations of how you behave when you're in there? How long you can stay in the space? And how do you get out of the space? So those are all thought, things that you can think about. And I, the Edutopia video does give um, the framework using the think sheet but there are other things you can do. You can maybe make a list of the steps that they need to take when they're in there and have that as a visual on the wall for them. Counselor Carrie has some great visuals about calm down spaces and it's set up like a sports, uh, it's in the sports theme. So, you know, in the first quarter you do this, in the second quarter you do this, in the third quarter you do this, in the fourth quarter you return to class. And Again, remember, these expectations are going to be different at home versus school, but at home you can still set up something along those same lines of this, you know, let's talk about times when you need to go to the calm down space, what it looks like when you're there, um, and when you can return after, what do you do when you're all done, what does that look like, and then for both home and school, have kids practice going into it and getting out of it so they understand what that feels like and what that looks like practice when they're calm. It's huge for kids to be able to get that sensation of what it feels like to go into the calm down corner, to experience that, and to, then to get to remove themselves from the calm down corner. So here's the thing. Will it work and make, will it work perfectly the first time? No. Will it work perfectly every time? No. But the goal is to help kids learn how to self-regulate. That's what we want our kids to be able to do. And this is a way to help them work on those skills in a way that feels helpful for them, that feels good for them, that where they can actually have some recognition of I need to go and take a few minutes by myself. I'm noticing this about my body. I'm noticing this about how I'm feeling. Maybe I should go and do something in there. And being able to recognize, okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Now I can return back to what I was doing before. I've written a couple of blogs about how to set up a coping skills toolkit and a coping skills calm down spot. So I'll link those up in the show notes for you. If you'd like more coping skills ideas, please feel free to visit copingskillsforkids.com. And one more thing, don't forget about yourself. Try to find a few minutes to take care of you and have some fun. Have an awesome day.